Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this series we're going to learn about Flask in Python. So first up, what is Flask? Flask is a lightweight micro web framework written in Python. It is designed to make web application development quick and easy. It offers the basic tools and functionalities required without the overhead of a full-fledged framework. Flask is often characterized by its simplicity and flexibility allowing developers to use any kinds of extensions or libraries alongside it. And so why would you choose Flask over other frameworks like Django and FastAPI? Well, Flask stands out for its minimalistic and modular approach. Unlike bigger frameworks that come with predefined structure and components, Flask provides the essentials, enabling developers to construct their application structure as they see fit. This makes Flask particularly suitable for rapid development, prototyping, and projects where a lightweight, flexible solution is preferred. Additionally, its vast ecosystem of extensions ensures that developers can easily add functionalities as needed without being locked into a specific way of doing things. So now you know a little bit about Flask, let's jump right into it. So we'll start this series using a virtual environment. This is useful to group all the dependencies of our project together and keeps it separate from the file system. You don't have to do this, so you can skip ahead to where we actually start getting into installing our dependencies, uh, but it is good practice to do this. First up, if you want to see the specific version of Python that you're currently using, you can type this into your terminal, python dash dash version and press enter. Once you can do that, you can see the specific Python version that you're running. In order to create a virtual environment, we have to type python dash m v e n v and then the name of the directory of our virtual environment. So in this case, I'm just naming it dot vnv. On Mac and Linux, you would just change this to python3 to specifically say the python3 version. If you do want to specify a specific version of Python, so for example, I have Python 3.10 and 3.11 both installed on my computer. So I could say Python 3.10 to use Python 3.10 or 3.11 to use Python 3.11. You can see that up here at our Python dash version, I have 3.11.2. If I try adding that 0.2, it's not going to work. So it only goes up after that first period. But for this, my regular Python is already pointing to version 3.11, so I can just leave it as it is and press enter. So once it's done, whatever you put here as the last argument is the folder that it created up here, naming your virtual environment. There's a lot of stuff in here that we won't go over in this video. But once you have this virtual environment, you can come over here to the bottom right where you have your Python version. And you can select the virtual environment right here to use the Python inside this virtual environment instead of the one on our machine. But there is another way that we can activate our virtual environment. So if you are on Mac or Linux, you would type source.env forward slash bin forward slash activate, and that will activate your virtual environment so you can start working in it. But if you are on Windows, we can just type .env backslash scripts backslash activate and press enter. And we can see that it now, instead of Z drive up here, it says .vnv. And that means we have successfully entered into our virtual environment. And we can get out of our virtual environment by typing deactivate and pressing enter, and we can see we are no longer in our virtual environment. If you are on Mac or Linux, you can type source bin deactivate to exit out of your virtual environment. And now that we have our virtual environment set up, I'll go ahead and reactivate it back into our virtual environment. And we'll get started with getting our dependencies for Flask. And so if you don't have pip already installed or it's not in your virtual environment, you can type this command python m ensure pip dash dash upgrade and press enter. And it will go ahead and get pip if you don't have it already installed. And so our first dependency is to install flask. And you can type pip install the package name, which is flask in this case. You can install dependencies like this, but it's actually very common to use a requirements.txt file to have all of your dependencies inside that file so you can install all of them at once. So we can do that by coming over to our project directory and creating a new file and calling it requirements.txt. And here we'll just type flask because that's the name of the package that we're using. And so having this requirements.txt file to have a list of our dependencies makes it easy for whenever we want to run our program on a different machine. We tell that machine what dependencies it needs and it can get them all and then run our program. And if you want to see all the different kinds of dependencies you can install in Python, you can search pypi and then the package name. And in this case, it's just flask. So it'll generally be the first one that comes up. So we click on this, and this is where pip will get all of its dependencies from. So whenever you want to install a new dependency, it'll get it from pypi.org. So in this case, we can see our install command right here for Flask. 
and we can see this version number 2.3.3, which is the version of Flask that we will use. So back into our requirements.txt file, we could leave it just as it is, but we will go ahead and add a specific version that we will use. So as you saw, it was version 2.3.3. So we add equals equals 2.3.3 to specify the exact version of Flask that we want to use. So we'll go ahead and save this. And then down here in our console, we can run pip install dash r requirements.txt to get all of the dependencies inside this file. So whenever we go ahead and run this, we can see that it's getting all of what it needs and then it's done. So cool, now we have Flask installed. Now let's get a basic app going. So in our app.py file, we'll go ahead and say from Flask import Flask, and then we will set an app variable equal to Flask of double underscore name double underscore. If you are running this file directly, this double underscore name double underscore variable will be set to double underscore main double underscore. But if you're not running the file directly, then this double underscore name double underscore is just the file name. You can name this whatever you want to give your Flask app a specific name, but it is common practice just to put double underscore name double underscore. And so from here, we'll go ahead and use a decorator of at app dot route. And then here we provide a forward slash as the base URL. And then we create a function. We can name this whatever we want. It doesn't really matter. And we will return hello Flask to anyone that accesses our base URL. And so basically what this decorator is doing is wrapping this route from the browser side to this specific function in the application. And so from here, we're gonna say if double underscore name double underscore is equal to double underscore main double underscore as a string, we'll go ahead and do app.run and set debug mode equal to true. Debug mode will allow us to hot reload our application without having to shut it down and restart it. And this if condition here is just checking that this file is being run directly instead of as being imported by something else. That way, whatever's inside this if statement is only being run whenever we run this specific file. And so once we have this all set up, we can run the application a few different ways. So one way is to use the flask command and we can patch dash dash app and then the name of our file. So in this case, app.py, except we don't include the .py, we just give it the name of the file. And we say run, and once we press enter, we can see that it started up the server and it's running at this address. Whenever we go ahead and control click on this, we can see that on the right side, Google Chrome, going to this specific address, we have hello flask with an exclamation point. So cool, that was really easy to set up. Sometimes when you try to access the flask command directly, there is a command not found error. You can type Python or Python 3 if you're on Mac or Linux, dash M flask to access the module and pass the same arguments we had before. So whenever we go ahead and run this, we can see it starts up the server just like the other way. So let's make a change to this. Inside of our home function, we'll change hello flask to be hello flask with a bunch of exclamation points. And we go ahead and save it. And we come over here and refresh the page. Nothing has changed. The way to get this to actually update with our changes here is to stop the server and then run it again. And once we do that, we can refresh the page over here and we have all of our exclamation points. This is not very convenient in a development environment when you are constantly making changes. So in order to prevent from you having to restart the server, you can pass the debug command in the command line. So for our command, we just add dash dash debug and press enter. And it has now started the server in debug mode. We can go and see this is what we have right here and it is reflecting right here. But if we change this to hello Zek and save it, we can see down here in the terminal that it detected a change in one of the files and it's reloading. So once it does this, we can come back over to the browser and refresh the page and see that it has updated and we didn't even have to restart the application. So that's awesome. So we can go ahead and stop the server over here. Another way we can run this is to run it with the button up here in the top of VS code. Whenever we do this, it does run it and it will apply this debug equals true command. So over here, go ahead and refresh just to be sure we're connecting to it. And we are awesome. And we can change this to subscribe with a bunch of exclamation points. We'll go ahead and refresh the page and we can see that it has updated. You can also come down here in the console without the application running. And as long as you're in the same directory as your application file, we can just type Python or Python three, if you're on Mac or Linux and then app.py, and this will start up the server. So just to keep in mind, it's not recommended to use the debug mode when deploying to production and putting your code in the real world but it's completely okay for our development environment. 
Awesome, now you know how to get Flask up and running. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.